Entry 1. I cannot believe my luck. Persimone is one fine mare. The date last night went incredibly well. She even let me kiss her. And her little filly, Carrot Tail, seemed to like me too. Even better, I kind of like her. I don't have to pretend like I thought I would, just to spend some more time with her mother. In fact, we have a second date planned for tomorrow night. Oh, and Greyhorn finally fixed the lights on level 2B. That flickering was driving Evy Pony bonkers. Entry 2. Damn it. Of all the luck. First, the whole lighting strip on guess which level blows out, plunging the damned atrium into blackness in the middle of a rush. Even worse, Persimone posted, postponed our date. Some unicorn filly did something wonky to Carrot Tail's pet, and Persimone's been with her all day, trying to keep the little cunt from drowning in her own tears. I take it back. I hate children. Entry 3. Got called to the office. Yeah. Over Stallion's office today. Big emergency. That acquired my special talents. Any guesses? He locked himself out again. Again! This is the third time this week. Fortunately, any pony with half a lick of sense could get the thing open. Weakest damn lock I've ever seen. Still, just in case Greyhorn ever has to do it, I left a handful of bobby pins and a copy of Today's Locksmith in the maintenance locker room for it. Safe. I even highlighted the most useful bits for him. So, as long as he doesn't forget the password, and even he shouldn't have a problem with that, and I made the password his name, so... Oh well, he'll probably still forget it. Meanwhile, my love life's taken a turn for the worse. Persimone's filly is apparently in the clinic. I hear the cat attacked her. I'll probably have to put it down. Entry 4. Where the hell is Greyhorn? The idiot missed his whole damn shift today. Called up to his room, but no answer. God damn it. I've got to do everything myself around here. Oh, and I replaced the entire lighting assembly on level 2B. And guess what? We're still having problems. I swear to God, the ponies who built this whole place must have been cutting corners. Probably cheated stable tech out for fat loads of money. I hope their asses melted when the mega spells hit. Entry 5. Still no Greyhorn. Talked with some others, and they haven't seen him either. Suggested I check medical. It would be just like him to find some way to fall and impale himself on his own horn. Damn it, there's that scratching sound again. Something managed to get into the ventilation system. I removed several of the corners of this floor. Hopefully, whatever it is will fall out, and I won't have to send some colt crawling in after it. Did I mention how much I hate children? Double damn it. I just spotted the thing staring me down. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was Caratail's damn cat. But they caught it and put it down yesterday. Triple damn it. The damn thing just bit me. I swear, I'm going to send a colt up there after it with a flamethrower. Looking up, I saw the dark opening where the covering gate should have been, and several pyres of alien eyes gleaming at me. Calamity, get back. They're in the ventilation. Calamity backed away at my shout, even as the first creature leapt out, landing on the shelving and spilling a bucket of fuses, crashing to the floor. It looked only vaguely feline, but with scales rather than fur. Oversized fangs and cat-like eyes, save the slits, ran has horizontal. Somehow, that last part freaked me out the most. I had made the mistake of putting Little Macintosh away, and when it left at me, I didn't have time to draw the gun out, or even think. I reacted instinctually, grabbing the creature telekinetically and hurling it away from me. Just like with the grenade. Only this time, we were in a small room and there was no place for it to go. So it thumped back against the wall, pinned, and hissed. A second jumped out, hitting the terminal and fell to the floor. I raised a hind hoof and brought it down as hard as I could on the creature's head. Rearing up, I treated the one that was pinned to a fatal blow for one of my forehooves. The third jumped right down onto me, claws catching my mane. I screamed like a little filly. Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! I bucked, panicked, sending a hindhoof through the terminal with a crunch of glass 
and a popping explosion. I could feel the hairs around my hoof singe. I turned towards the doorway and saw Calamity taking aim. Blam! My mind conjured up a flashback of being wounded and dying. Shot multiple times by this very same pony who was swooping down the tracks, aiming at me. Without thinking, I threw myself to the floor, trying to dodge his shot. A second after Calamity had already fired, ripping the cat snake thing apart and leaving me unscathed. I got wobbly up to my hooves and tried to smile, although I could feel it was more like a grimace. I could read it in his face. He wanted me to tell him that I should trust him, to tell me to stop being afraid when he was going to shoot me. But he wasn't going to. He couldn't, because he knew that I had every right and reason to be gun shy around him, and that I should be acting this way. In that moment, I realized something. He was actually sorry he shot me. Not sorry he shot a new local hero who saved some townsfolk, but sorry he shot me. He wasn't out here for embarrassment. He wasn't trying to fix some loss of reputation or standing, either in his eyes or any pony else's. He felt regretful that I nearly died. I didn't even realize I was thinking about him that way, but now I realized I had been. Damn it. Now I feel like I should apologize to him. He turned away, looking up at the ceiling. I figured the sound of the shot scared him off. For now, I agreed. I had my revelation, but I couldn't tell him. He'd just deny it, and then there'd be awkwardness. He's a boy, after all. Damn it. I scowled myself for such a thought. Not that it was hard to figure out what he made me think like that. I glared at the stupid poster. I hate this stable. Little Macintosh whipped around, firing off three more sats guided shots, and three more evil little cat snake things were blown into oblivion. They were easy to kill, which hardly made up for them being so small, fast, and agile, and extremely aggressive. Several more tried to jump onto Calamity, finding purchase with their claws. He bucked throwing back his wings and sending them flying, and Buck kicked one of the fallen into rubbish paste. How many of these little monsters you reckon we got? I fired at one of the creatures and Calamity had thrown, missing. And again, hitting this time. The last got by me, leaping for Calamity's back, and I heard him howl as the creature sunk its teeth into the back of his neck. Don't worry, I've got it. I rushed the creature away tendalentically my horn glowing fiercely as it brought little Macintosh up to the meowing little thing, dripping with Calamity's blood, and I pulled the trigger. Damn, those things got a bite. Hold still. Let me look. I was already pulling medical bandages out of my saddlebags, and I was nearly out of those. I knew we could get some either at the clinic, which should be ahead, or the living quarters, bathroom, which would mean a lot of backtracking. We had gone through maintenance, a trip that had been a long, wet, but eventful slog of the lowest part of the stables, which was half full with water. We had found the locker room, and with the password, we had opened the safe. My bobby pin collection was now far more comfortable, and today's locksmithing was tucked neatly in my saddlebags. The only creature we had found in maintenance were dead. Drowned, despite looking like a cross between a serpent and a cat. The little monsters didn't seem to swim. Thank the wasteland for small favors when you can get them. We did, however, start finding skeletons. Sporadically, at first, and now in groups. The closer we got to the atrium, the heart of the stable, the more deaths we found. I couldn't hold back the images of someone walking through stable two and finding the bodies of everyone I had known for all but the last few days of my life, dead, like this. For a moment, it was too much. I had to rest to clear my head. No less than nine of the damn things chose that moment to attack us. Rubbing Calamity's wounds, I grimaced at my lack of medical skill. If I tried to join the Ministry of Peace, they'd kick me out on my tail. It was bad enough when only I would die if I didn't know how 
the right end of a potion bottle. But I really didn't like having anybody else relying on my lack of skill. Still, we were up and moving in the right direction. Except, we really weren't, <laughs> were we? The more I thought about it, the less reasonable my reasons for wandering down here seemed. Finishing, I turned away, and looked back down the way we've come. Okay, that's it. I've been a dumb pony. We turn around, gallop back to the entrance as fast as we can, bittercate ourselves, and wait for the damn storm to get out, get done. When we leave and close the door behind us. Um, actually, I vote we continue to the clinic. I turned, and surprised, seeing Calamity, Calamity seeing my surprise, turned to shock, then horror. I'm guessing y'all, he teetered, looking pale beneath his coat, would keep something for, you know, poison? Thump. Down went the Pegasus. Calamity! Chimera. From the personal notes of Dr. Briarberry, Head of Medicine, Stable 24. I've chosen to call this new species Chimera, for I feel they are suitably obvious reasons. The creature is a result of wild magic burst from a rather exceptionally gifted filly in Quantra. In a flash of uncontrollable magical power, Quanta managed to fuse several creatures within her vicinity into a single being, a fully functional and completely new life form. The initial created Chimera took several days to molt before revealing its true nature, during which time another filly, Carrot Tail, was attacked by the creature. She was rushed to the clinic, but perished within hours from an unknown medical toxin injected into the creature, into the child by the creature. After molting, the Chimera subsequently attacked a maintenance worker by the name of Greyhorn. This time, both the Chimera and his victim were fully mature. Based on the case of Carrot Tail, we treated Greyhorn with antivenom spells and potions, but to no avail. Greyhorn lasted three times as long as Carrot Tail and was in extreme agony for most of that period. It was only after Greyhorn's death that we learned the key component of the Chimera's makeup. As you will be able to see from the images I have having attached to this document, the feline and serpentine elements of the fusion are quite obvious. See images C1 and C2. What we initially did not realize, couldn't have suspected, is that there had been some manner of insect in the classroom when Roe cast her spell. And that, too, was infused into the creature, on a deeply inherent level. You see, the fangs of a chimera aren't so much like the fangs of a rattlesnake, but more akin to an insect's ovipositor. The behavior of this species is extremely aggressive, attacking any suitable host within it can inject its eggs. Over the course of a single day, those eggs will mature within the host, after which... A litter of new, baby chimera, will dig their way out of the infected pony, ultimately killing the host if the pony is not already dead. In the case of Gayhorn, Greyhorn, five new chimera erupted from his body, less than an hour after he was pronounced dead. See image C3. You can imagine the look on my assistant's face, but you don't have to. See image C4. Fortunately, from the case of Greyhorn, and the baby chimera specimens he provided us with, we'd be able to devise and conjure an anti-venom potion. Unfortunately, some of the herbs required were in tragically short supply, so there is a high probability that we will not have sufficient quantities for everyone. The overstallion is keeping one bottle locked away in his office, along with the recipe. Meanwhile, I am storing the rest in the medical refrigerator here in the clinic while I wait for the overstallion's decision on how to implement dispersal. Oh, Celestia, have mercy. By the time I was done reading, horror turned me numb. Slowly, I got up from Dr. Briarberry's terminal and stared about the clinic. There were pony skeletons everywhere. Dozens of them surged towards the open door of the medical fridge. Others were entangled around each other. A new species, extremely hostile, which renders its victims immobile 
with a single bite and then tortures them to death from the inside over most of the day. And in doing so, it can quintuple its numbers. A swift realization was the only thing that had kept the Chimera from overrunning the equestrian race land. It was the river and the fact that these Chimera can't swim. Thank the wasteland for huge favors. If we survived this, I was going to have a little talk with Crane about his definition of small bit of trouble. Understatement was not a virtue in the equestrian wasteland. I looked at the bed Calamity was resting on, looking even weaker than before. Oh, goddess. I couldn't tell him this. Let him think he's poisoned. It's much better than this. Pointlessly, I stepped over and swung back the door to the fridge, already knowing I would find nothing inside. Okay. One last shot. I walked to the clinic window and looked out into the atrium. The room was dark. Every light in it had failed, and the only illumination came from a couple of still-functioning lights in the clinic, and the shuddering, flickering light from the circular window. In the Omnivare's, no, the Omnistallion's office above. If there was a single dose of the antidote left, it would be locked away in a safe up there. And that was the only way to get through the atrium. The atrium was teeming with Chimera. Swallowing hard, I turned to Calamity and told him the plan. After staring at me for a long time, Calamity finally said, that's insane. I focused my horn and it began to glow. And I slipped open my saddlebags. I'll be okay. No, you won't. It's suicide. And you'll be killing us both. I looked at him sternly. Let me guess. You're thinking you should do it yourself, seeing as you're already poisoned. Never mind that you can't even stand up without help, and barely with it. The rush-colored Pegasus managed to look cross. Then get yourself out of here. At least one of us will survive this crazy stable. Now I got to play cross. I'm not leaving my friend behind. I reloaded little Macintosh. Calamity coughed. He looked up at me with a genuine astonishment. F friend but, but I shot you. I rolled my eyes at him and nodded. Yes, you did. And I'm planning to needle you about that for the rest of your life. And I'm sure I'm not going to get my blood's worth if you die today. Don't be a stubborn fool, little Pip. There's no way in tarnation you can possibly... Levitating the spell buck up for Calamity to see, I smiled with a whole lot more confidence than I felt. I have to do this. It was, without question, the most harrowing two hours of my life. Inching my way through darkness, surrounded by lethal predators. They couldn't see me, but in the darkness, it was my only my EFS and targeting spells that was able to keep me from stepping on or brushing against one of them. It was a minefield. And as I crossed, I realized just how calling my own stupidity a social minefield did flippant injustice to an actual minefield. And anyone who had ever been caught in one, this was a minefield. And all the mines were alive and moving. One wrong move, and it wasn't just I who would die for it. But I did make it. And for once, the wasteland was pouring out the favors. The Overstallion's door was easy to pick, as advertised. From the skeleton, I guess the Overmare locked himself in. And I feared he had consumed the anti-chimera potion. But within his locked safe, I found both it and the recipe, as well as an old recording. My guess was that it was his last words. If I had been stable too, and I had been the Overmare, watching everyone die because of some magical accident, I suspect I might have done the same. I took all three items, figuring I should, considering what I was going to do next. Even after drinking the remedy, Calamity was going to take some time to recover, and there was no way to know how long. Lifting both the Pegasus 
and little Macintosh. <clears throat> I followed the path back, all too aware of the damn chimera that were using the ventilation and ceiling areas were not to be trusted. I made it all the way back to the storage room near the main door. Sitting down with today's locksmiths, I went through, finding all the tips I could in a short amount of time. The highlighting really helped. Outside, thunder shook the mountain reassuringly, and I looked up and thanked Celestia for the storm. The tips from the book proved useful, and with a bit of effort, and only one bobby pin, I was able to get the box marked dynamite open. Inside, there was indeed dynamite, and I removed each stick gingerly, then placed a curled up calamity in the box, closed it. Should a chimera come for him while I was busy, I didn't want him to get hurt again. For the next few hours, I ran through the entirety of Stable 24. Everything but the atrium. I opened each door that could be opened, and then blocked it with a trash can, or a tipped over filing cabinet, or anything else that would keep the door from closing. As for the atrium, after looting the clinic for medical supplies, I left a stick of burning dynamite on the windowsill of the clinic and ran. <clears throat> the rest of the dynamite was to blow the cave opening enough to bring the river pouring in. And by the time I was ready to set that off, Clemente had gotten up and wondered why he was packed as a high explosive. His eyes got wider and wider as I explained what I was doing. Damn. That was all. We'd been down in stable 24 for most of the night, and it was dawn by the time we returned to New Appaloosa, at least in theory. The storm had dropped, stopped pouring the crap out of the wasteland, and was now content to just rain on us. Kenny was kind enough to let me crash in an unused bed in her clinic, more than fair payment for giving her the anti-chimera cure, one copy of it, that is. It was still raining after I woke up, and later in the afternoon. And it was late evening before Calamity had woken up and trotted to join me. By then, I had finally been making some progress under Crane's tutelage. I was panting and sweating heavily as we stopped for a spark of coal a break. I say we're even, I told Calamity, as Crane floated an ice cold spark of cola over for each of us. I don't understand. If we just stay put at the door, you would never have been bitten. And if we stayed at the door, you never would have got the antidote. If we'd stay put, you never would have needed it. Aha! But some pony else might. Crane said they've been having trouble with the critters, so obviously some of them have been getting out. Crap. I'd forgotten all about that. Still, with luck and their nest destroyed, it wasn't your stable, you know. Calamity's voice had a solemn quality. I looked up at your friend. What? I know you grew up in a stable, but it wasn't that stable. Of course it wasn't. I knew that, but I still wasn't sure what Calamity was getting at. It's just... You seem to be taking what we found down there. Uh, I don't know. Personally. He looked at me earnestly. I just wanted to remind you, is all. He was right, of course. I don't know what I was looking for, or how I expected to find, but I'd let Stable 24 become a personal affront. Stable 24 had never been my house, and I had no relation to it at all. The only threads connecting the different stables were 200 years old, dead, and buried in a history long forgotten. Stable tech hadn't existed for long, in a long, long time, and I had no allegiance to it, and the long dead couldn't bear any responsibility to me. Oh, I pulled out a record from the Overstellian's office. Should we hear what's on it? Footnote. Level up. New perk, gunslinger. While using a mild mouth-held or levitated firearm, your chance of hitting in sats is increased by 25%. Quest perk added. 
Mighty Telekinesis, level 1. You triple the mass that you can levitate with your unicorn magic. 